Hello and welcome to the Muslim Viewpoint, a video podcast series powered by the non-profit national media platform, American Muslim Today. I'm your host, Rupert Malik, and today we are taking a look at the protests being held in Pakistan in solidarity with its imprisoned former Prime Minister, Imran Khan. Day four has seen opposition supporters in Pakistan calling off their mass protests in the capital, demanding the release of the jailed former Prime Minister, just a day after a large march through central Islamabad. Khan's party, Tariqi Saf, said in a statement today that the protests had been temporarily suspended in response to the government's brutality. This comes after PTI leaders claimed that dozens of protesters were killed and injured in live fire from police and the military. While the protesters had vowed to remain in the capital until Khan's release, they were met with fierce resistance from police. They were pushed back with tear gas volleys as they attempted to breach barricades in their advance towards Dechok, the prominent protest hub which lies within the heavily guarded red zone and is a focal point for political demonstrations. By late last night, a power blackout was imposed in the area, plunging it in darkness as a major crackdown began. Bushra Bibi, the wife of Imran Khan, who has recently emerged as a political figurehead for PTI, led the protest convoy into Islamabad. She reportedly fled the scene in the dead of the night on Tuesday amid the escalating military action. According to reports, 17 civilians had been killed due to gunfire from both army and paramilitary forces. In addition, hundreds of others are reported injured in the violence as authorities are continuing to assess the situation. According to Ali Amin Gandapur, the PTI chief minister to Khyber Pakhtunwa, almost 1,000 people who had taken part in the protest were arrested today. A viral video circulating online showed security forces pushing a man off a stack of cargo containers in central Islamabad earlier today while he was in the midst of praying. Doctors at hospitals in Islamabad said they had received multiple patients with gunshot wounds. Life in the capital is reportedly returning to normal late Wednesday following the dispersal of the protesters. Business activities have resumed and educational institutions are expected to reopen tomorrow. But at the height of the mass protest, despite the government-imposed lockdown, supporters of Khan, at his request, had relentlessly marched towards the capital. The government confirmed that over 150,000 people had crossed the Attic middle line between Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunwa to reach the federal capital. Democracy Chalk is a symbolic site near key government offices, including the Prime Minister's office, where Khan supporters had their brief sit-in. Federal Interior Minister Mohsin Nakhri continuously warned protesters against entering the Red Zone or marching to Dechok, stating that the government is prepared to take extreme measures, including mass arrests and live fire. Protesters were seen working collectively to clear massive stacks of shipping containers at China Chalk to pave their way forward. According to some reports, some protesters demonstrated their unyielding resolve by swimming across rivers to continue their journey. By Tuesday evening, eyewitnesses on the ground reported that paramilitary forces already opened fire on protesters, resulting in severe injuries to many. Key road access in Islamabad, particularly in commercial areas, were reportedly blocked using mounds of sand and dirt, adding to the challenges faced by the demonstrators. The situation escalated further as all street lights in the area were reportedly switched off, raising suspicions among protesters and insiders alike. Sources claim that the government may attempt to stage incidents to discredit the protesters, prompting caution among Pakistan Tariq and Saf supporters. Meanwhile, internet disruptions continually persisted across multiple cities in Pakistan, a situation that began late last week. According to an update from internet monitoring organization NetBlocks, what WhatsApp backends had been restricted, severely hindering the sharing of media such as photos and voice messages. Schools in Islamabad and Rawalpindi had been shut down on Monday and Tuesday as all public transport between the cities and their terminals ground to a halt, officials and witnesses reported. On Tuesday, approximately 30% of the anticipated protesters had reached their destination with many more en route. A large number of demonstrators had travelled from Khyber Pakhtunwa enduring a gruelling three-day journey. Tear grass shelling in the area had exacerbated the hardships with water shortages compounding the difficulties for protesters. 
Amid the unfolding chaos, Bushra Bibi addressed the crowd on Tuesday, stating, Our only goal is to reach Dichok, no matter what anyone says. That is Khan's order, and I will not turn back without securing his release. He has endured immense hardship in jail, rejecting any deals, as his sole mission is to save Pakistan, even at the cost of his life. But he will not let that happen, she said. The 72-year-old leader was initially arrested on May the 9th, 2023, over a corruption case, only to be released two days later on the Supreme Court's orders. However, in August of the same year, he was detained again and handed a sentence in a case concerning the illicit sale of state gifts. He has remained in custody ever since. The former Prime Minister ousted in April 2022 through a parliamentary no-confidence vote is entangled in over 150 legal cases. PTI insists these charges are politically driven. Protesters have been rallying for the release of their leader and other political detainees, demanding the reversal of a constitutional amendment that gives the government unchecked power to appoint judges for political cases. Journalists on Tuesday reported a growing sense of community support for protesters, with local families in Islamabad seen providing home-cooked meals to demonstrators who travelled from across the country. As protests stretched into the night, many residents were offering blankets to help combat the bitter cold. Protesters, particularly those from KPK, had expressed their gratitude to the capital residents who had shown hospitality. Pakistan immigrant communities and diaspora communities and allies have also held protests in the last few days in various other countries such as Italy, America, Australia and Canada. Well, that's all for this update. Please join us again for a, a further updates and we will be monitoring the situation. Thank you for tuning in to The Muslim Viewpoint. If you appreciate our public service journalism, please consider supporting our non-profit registered 501c3 by following us on social media at American Muslim Today or donating by visiting our website, americanmuslimtoday.com. All donations are tax deductible. And before you go, please be sure to hit the subscribe button.